Hi everyone, in this tutorial you're going to learn about how to customize your character's T-Pose to produce the best results in your character's iClone animation. This same procedure can be used universally with any animation program out there, but for this example I'm using Daz Studio. I'm going to start with the default pose here first. In 3D Exchange you can switch your view to orthogonal, which is better for determining exact angles. The hotkey for orthogonal view is Ctrl Q. Now you can easily switch to any absolute angle views such as top, front, and side views using the home row as hotkeys. Now you can easily switch to front, right, left, and top viewports. Make sure that your character is standing on the ground in 3D Exchange as well before converting. When you think you've got that established, convert the character to a non-standard character. Since this is a Daz character, I can finish the bone mapping in a single click by going up to the Daz Studio preset. Now you'll want to make sure your T-Pose is correct before you click the active box. I'll switch to a side view here and make sure that my character's side posture is upright and correct. It seems okay so I'll go back to the front camera view. I actually want the legs to be a little bit closer together but only slightly. To accomplish this, I first want to go into Preferences and make sure that I have my angle snap set on. This will allow me to measure the exact angle adjustment for both legs. Once I've done that, I'll also want to make sure that my feet are facing exactly forward. So I'll use the same procedure that I did on the legs and rotate the feet more towards the middle. Again, try to make sure they're flat on the floor and not tilted at an angle. Okay, so now I'm back at the top camera view and you'll see that the default Daz pose curves the arms a little bit. What I want to do is straighten those out so that they go along a straight horizontal line. I can combine a little rotation from the upper arms and some from the lower arms to do this. You can see how the small angle snap comes in handy here. After my initial adjustments, I'm going to click the active box and preview my walking motion. It seems like the shoulders are a little low here, so what I want to do is further adjust my T-Pose to conform to the unique properties of this model. I want to uncheck the active box to calibrate the shoulders further. To do this, I'm going to raise the clavicle bones here first, as they are on the top of the hierarchy. You can see with my character's right arm that if I only raise the upper arm, the mesh on the shoulder will not raise at all, which is not really what I want. So I'll do the same thing and raise the clavicle, while setting the rest of the arms at a horizontal level. You can see when I select active again in preview, the results look a lot better. Okay, now that my body posture is all set up, let's focus on the hands here. For ideal results, the hands should be flat, with the palms facing the ground, and a 45 degree angle separating the fingers from the thumb, just like in the illustration here. What I'll do to get my character's hands like that is the same thing I did with the arms. Only this time, I'll be rotating the fingers to get them flatter and more parallel to the ground. Here, you can see I'm adjusting the thumb to a 45 degree angle away from the fingers. As for the fingers, I'm going to make them as close together and as linear as possible, which is what I'm adjusting right now. The finger rotation can be a little picky, 
but just remember to try to get them as parallel as possible to the ground, as well as pointing in the same direction. Here I finished my left hand finger mapping, and you can see when I press active and preview my finger calibration that the left hand results look a bit better. You can see the index finger on the right goes in front of the thumb instead of being tucked in with the others. Next, make sure that the floor contact is set correctly. If your T-pose was set correctly at the correct height and everything, this should be fine, but you can also make further adjustments. You'll also want to make sure that you refine the contact points for both the feet and the hands. I'm doing this by adjusting the little turquoise indicators to the correct point, which is the contact plane where the hands will contact any object. You can adjust the various values for feet offset here in the properties panel. I won't want to really adjust the height as I've already done that, so I'll demonstrate what happens if I adjust the foot stance to something a little wider here. You can see when I select my preview walking motion that it looks a bit unnatural. You can use these preview motions to further refine your T-pose as well. I'll also want to make sure that my character is exhibiting accurate motions from a side view as well. To do this, I'll switch to the side camera view and see what happens if I offset the hips a significant distance forward. You can see the walk looks a bit unnatural, similar to if I tilt the hips to a positive 60 degree angle. Okay, I think we're good at negative 15 degrees. So once that's confirmed with my preview motions, I can just go over and select Convert. My character has now been converted to a non-standard character in iClone. If I want to test out any other motions, I can easily click and drag them from my Explore window into the Motion Library here, and then double-click on them to preview. It's always a good idea to do this with any motions you intend to use for that character in order to get a good idea of how your particular character will look with that motion. Remember, a good T-pose is essential to good animation results.